Hey, good evening. Welcome to the shop. Have you ever tried to make a tapered leg and wanted to do it safely and repeatedly? Well, tonight I'm going to show you how to make a handy dandy jig to do just that. This is a nice little tapered leg table. This is a new uh, scale for the shaker end table with a drawer. I don't have the drawer front in there, but this one is only going to be about 24 and a half inches high. So it's ideal next to a sofa because you don't want that bedside table height next to a sofa. A 24 and a half is just right to reach over and set your glass down and watch the game. <laughs> you don't but, fall asleep. But what we're doing is, what we want to do is taper like these legs. So if you look at these legs, they're, it's right about an inch and three eighths square at the block. And then it tapers down to three quarter inch foot down at the bottom. And that is only on the inside surface. So the outside is straight to the floor. So you're only having the taper on that surface and then on this surface. So underneath the rail. All right, so what we're gonna do is set up a jig to make that taper cut. And before I can set it up, I just want a little bit of information is that the rail, this rail is four and a quarter inches high. Let's just double check that. Yeah, four and a quarter. So I don't want my taper to go up beyond that or I'd have a gap in that joint right there. So I'm gonna stop it at about five inches below and then just hand plane skim off the table saw cut and uh, not go beyond four and a quarter. All right, so that's the plan. Now to make this jig, let's head on over first to the table saw and I wanna show you the very base of the jig. It takes so little material and it starts just with a piece of plywood. It's like 28 inches long and five and three quarters inch wide. It could be six, five and a half, whatever. But that's what mine is. So let's head over there and we'll make our first cut. All right, so I'm just gonna make a, a quick cut on this piece of plywood just to trim it and illustrate how this jig will work. So let's put on our gear, turn on the dust collector and make our cut. Okay, so if you've not seen this before, the principle is really pretty simple. We've got a platform for our jig or the base, and I just ripped this at five and five eighths now. So if I was to jack this blade up, like I'm going to have to a little bit anyway, you notice I'll run past this blade and everything above this edge is going to be cut in plane with this edge. So if you just imagine like a piece of glass or coming up along this edge, that's the plane that this blade will cut. So whatever I can clamp to this board and hang over the edge is gonna be sawn off when I make my next pass. So I'm not gonna move the fence, but I, just want to show you that to get started. We're going to go back to the bench and set up our jig to cut our taper now. All right, so here we go. We're going to lay it out on a leg. So here's a leg that's the same height there. So first I'm just going to arrange, normally I'd look at the leg and decide what surface I want to go with. I could try burying this up inside the table. That's one way to go about it or it could be more daring. And let's see if we cut it out. It doesn't really matter much. So I know I'm tapering, so I'm gonna to try to cut that away. We'll see if we lose it or not. All right, so I'm going to let this be 
one of my faces and then this will be my other face. So this is my outside corner. These two surfaces are not getting tapered, but this surface is going to get tapered and this surface will be sawn and tapered. So when I'm tapering this, it means I'm cutting into this surface a certain amount and looking from this face, I'll be cutting away here. You can notice, see how the grain is running kind of that way? I usually try to lay out the leg in that way if I can. So we'll give it a shot here. Now, if that's true, then let's lay out where our mortises will be. Our rail would be coming in to this leg here. So I'd have a mortise approximately there and then another one over here. That's just the slot we'll be cutting for the rail to go in with a tenon. All right, so under that, I want my taper. Now let's lay it out. Here's my, my mortise. I wanna come down, like I said, five inches for my taper to begin. So let's just use a, it'll be easy to show the comment with the combination square. I'll just come over to five inches and I'm gonna lock it in. Then I can make a line right here. So this is my initial tapering line. I want to go to that point. And I could do it on the other one as well. So my apron is going to actually be up at four and then a quarter. Boy, it would help if I kept that flat. There it is. Okay, so we're going to just be tapering away there. And then we'll be cutting down to leave a three quarter inch foot. So let's look at this. If this is my point, I'll bring this up. This is my five inch drop point. I want to taper down. So I'll be cutting this off and leaving three quarters of an inch on that outside of the foot. So let's just use our square again. This time I'll just use it to measure and there's my three quarter. Okay. So actually I'll get my little square and show you. Let's lay it out correctly. Let's put three quarters on our square right on the money. And then I'll come up the, with it held there. So I've just got, this is three quarters of an inch. right here. So I'm going to keep that. All right. So that describes our taper. We're going to go from that line and let me use a straight edge. I'll just use one of these legs. I think they're fairly straight. I'll go right from that line up to this exit point here. So that's my beginning of the taper. So all you have to do is lay out whatever tape you're dealing with on a leg. Okay. So that's it. We're going to cut that off. So now to do that, here's my jig. Here's what I, here's what I just sawed going through the table saw. I was pushing in this direction. So whatever I hang out over that edge on this side is going to get sawn off. I'm going to raise the blade and it's just going to saw it off. It's that simple. So I just have to find a way to fix this leg to this platform and it will be easy. All right. So all I'm doing here is setting that line flush with the edge. So that's right where I want the table saw blade to start cutting right at this line. And then I want on the bottom, can you look at this at this foot. I want that three quarter inch line to be set right with that edge so that this is the amount I'm sawing away. That's my taper. So let's just clamp that in place there. I've got it clamped in place there and I'm just going to hold it in this position. 
And you can see I've got one. Let's put another one. Put one down low. And I'll move this one up a little bit. Okay, so this is holding the leg in the exact position I want to be for the taper. So now all I have to do is apply some stops and some hold downs. So the first thing I'll do is apply the stop at the foot. Let me um, get my, I'm going to use the Norm nail gun tonight. I've got an 18 gauge inch and a quarter uh, brad in there. So what I'm going to do, this is how easy it is. You just need a piece of plywood. This one ends up being like 28 inches long. I just make them generally about four inches longer than the leg is. Uh, so I've got these three little pieces of plywood. These are going to be my stops. And then these two thicker pieces, these are my riser blocks for my toggle clamps. So we'll deal with those after, but let's just get the stops on now. Now, I'm going to put a little glue on this guy. I have a question while you're doing that, Tom. Sure. Um, Richard's curious, do you always taper two sides or sometimes four? I always, typically it's just two sides. Um, the only time I've done more is I've done three sides when it's the middle leg of like a uh, sideboard, the middle. Usually there's two inside legs, so you're tapering both sides and the back but uh, tapering is almost always just the inside surfaces otherwise it looks a little towed in the nice thing about a taper is it gives the illusion of a splay all right so see that i'm flush with that and i'm just going to tack it and another whoops yeah. so these I'm not going to glue in case I change my mind, but I'm just going to nail these on. These don't need glue. So you see the stop is just going flat against the leg. And then I'm going to put a riser block right in this location. And then up here, I'll put another stop. So this will also be flat against the leg right up here. Okay. So I'm just going to hold it flat. It's right where I want it. And that's it. Now I just need to put the riser blocks in and these I will, these just have to be set to accommodate these toggle clamps. So these toggle clamps will get set about like that. So that's pretty good. I just need to be about three quarters of an inch away. So I'm going to hold this. I'm just going to fire into the bottom. That look good, guys? <laughs> it felt like it moved the block. That's good. All right. And that's good. Now let's get the other one. And then I'll, I'm going to run screws in from the bottom. You can also uh, glue those down. But I'm going to make this one not quite so permanent in case I need to change it. All right. So I'll just set that there. Pretty high on the leg, so I'll have one in each position. So this is flush against the stops. I'm, I've got an end stop and my two side stops. Now I can take the leg away because it's right in position. And now I've got only to get my toggles on. Now the toggle pulls up. So I'm going to run a screw in from the bottom, maybe a couple screws, just to make sure it doesn't... Uh, Pull that block up. Nathan's asking, would you use this jig with a shaper to clean up the leg or would you build it different when using a shaper? Um, you can actually use a jig a lot like this on the shaper. Yeah, I would. Um, and I have. Um, have I shown that in other classes? Yeah, absolutely, Nathan. That's exactly right. Because you're holding it down and you're just, in the same way you're holding it, you want to hold the piece so it's flush. And the bearing 
would ride against this surface. I've shown a lot of jig making where we've cut curves instead of a straight shot like this that's just riding through the table saw. We'd have curved shapes for the back legs of chairs. And then I'd have the toggle clamps which would hold them down. And then you'd run a flush bearing against the shape which would just pattern route the leg to the exact shape. So it's very similar principle. All right, so I've got those pre-drilled there. I'm just gonna run a couple screws in from the bottom. It's not my best countersink fit, but we'll use it. When I usually make these, I'm gluing them and I'll just nail them and I'll just wait, you know, do something else and come back. So it's even faster, but when you want to get them on there, a little dab of glue, the nails or some screws like this will do the job. All right, this may be loud again, okay? No problemo. Small one here. Don't tell me both guns are gonna run out of juice. All right, I put a little beeswax on this one to prevent that. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna just make like it. Woodpecker. You guys know what this is like. You're hoping that's it. All, All right. right made it so what we're going to do now is put our toggle clamps on so i'm just going to bring the leg over into place and now get the clamps in position and this one i can just run these screws right in i'm just using little one inch screws here so i'm getting this about the right distance away i'll have to adjust that toggle clamp in a minute Let's just go ahead and... We put a link in the description to these toggle clamps. Yeah, these I'm used curious. to be pricey when I, when I first started getting into these things 30 years ago. It was, uh, they were pricey. And, but now, of course, like everything else, there's imported versions that are lighter weight. And these, these really don't have to be the big heavy ones. So... These work fine and they're much cheaper. You can get half a dozen um, for what one used to cost, <laughs> it seems. And let's go over here. But the ones I used to get were quite heavy duty. Um, not necessary here. Okay, that looks good there. Just get this in position. while you're doing this. Uh -huh. He said he noticed the blade is all the way up on your table saw. Oh, Do I you prefer the blade higher up rather than lower? He was concerned it was for safety. No, I, I brought it all the way up uh, just to make that illustration of the plane. Um, I, haven't, I haven't made a cut yet with it that high. I'll bring it down a little for the cut. But yeah, that's... Uh, I was trying just to illustrate with the high blade how high the plane it's going to cut along the edge of that board. Okay. okay, wow, that hit pretty good, okay? So you wanted these to just be, so there's just a little force like that, so that rubber compresses, and when that rubber compresses, it gives a certain amount of force down. Now, if you put too much, you can kind of mess push your leg over and it won't cut squarely but that feels pretty good i might loosen it up just a touch these hold quite well <laughs> i always think famous last words like i was jumping forward in my mind to being over the table saw and having <laughs> the leg come flying off no they do they do hold well 
Um, you can use this on the uh, bandsaw as well. Is that true? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, the bandsaw leaves a little more rough line, but the bandsaw is a safer way to do it. You know, um, if you don't have a table saw and just a bandsaw, I mean, that's the way it is for some people. That works awesome. But, you, you know, you'll have to, of course, plane that as you do with this one. All right, so I think that'll do it. So check that out. Nice little snap. Snap. That's it. We've made our jig. The toy is ready. So now we're going to go over to the table saw, and I'm not going to change a thing. We'll just make our cut, and we'll be cutting that off. So let's head over. Holding it up here, you can see how much higher I am than the work. Now technically that actually, it's unsafe for the blade being exposed, but it actually is a safer cut because the saw blade is cutting more downward. When you lower it a lot, it's, it's cutting a little more toward you. So I just like to get the teeth fully clear of the board like that. Here we go. I'm going to turn on the dust collector and let's make our first cut with the new jig. So let's take it out. Check it out. Nice little taper. All right, so here's the thing. We've, we've tapered that side. Now we're gonna rotate. And again, we see where we're gonna mortise. We'll be tapering this surface here. So this one we can lock down. That hits fine. At the bottom though, look, we've sawn away the taper. So our hold down no longer works. So we're just gonna use a cutoff and slide it forward until we get good. There, that's good right there. So I'm just gonna make a little circle around it where I wanna keep it. I'm gonna just run over to the bandsaw real, oh no, the chop saw, I'll be right back. Stay right there. So here's my uh, block and I'm gonna put it in this direction, that's the wedge. All right, so I'm just gonna position it inside that circle I made and lock it down. And there we go, we're ready for round two. Okay, that's it. Let's check it out. Pretty nice little tapered leg. So I think the reason I started with three quarter here is because it's a shorter taper. So if we go that steeply, it just felt like it was gonna to be too extreme on that little table. I'm gonna play around with it a little. I like how much that is, but I still have to hand plane this. So I can make it lighter as I want. Now, up here, this was what I sawed to, and you can see my saw mark just took the line right there. So now I can hand plane, but I don't wanna go up beyond four and a quarter. Let's head back to the bench. I'll just hit this a little bit, and we'll see if it cleans up nicely. Looks like the grain's a little bit wild, but should be okay. All right, so we're gonna skim these two surfaces now. I'm gonna get it into the vise and on the bench dogs here. All right, so what I wanna do is make sure with this, usually I would have my mortises would be cut already, like we mentioned earlier, and they'd be right there. So you'd have like a mortise here. You know, this could be the mortise. 
and I wouldn't plane beyond that mortise. So let's just do a little more. See what's happening? I'll scribble right here. So one, as soon as that scribble's gone, I'll stop. I just got into it. Oh, a touch more. That's it. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate. All right, so I scribbled again, and here we go. This is a little gnarly, but it's working. This is fun though. This is fun planing because it's narrow and there's not a lot of resistance. And that's a fairly full shaving I'm getting there. So I'm also making the foot a little smaller and I could measure it right here and see where we're at. We're just a touch under three quarter right there. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, there's, let me put it on this side. Okay. Dirty. That looks nice, huh? Nice little taper. Strong enough looking foot. I know, I might take a little more off. I'll adjust the jig probably to go 11 16 and then we'll hand plane a touch off. <laughs> Make it just a little lighter. And that's it. Awesome. That's all there is. So you can custom make any jig to any size leg to make it work for you. While I got you, if you enjoyed this content, you get value from it, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing most of all. And also check out the website at epicwoodworking.com. We'd love to have you on a mailing list. We won't bug you, but we'll inform you of new courses and when we have fun videos popping up, especially these live streams. Well, there you have it in a nutshell, making your own leg tapering jig. Don't go too crazy with this. It is addictive. But, <laughs> but on behalf of the camera lady and myself, we thank you so much for being part of our little community here. It means so much that you tune in and you spend a little time with us here in the shop. We look forward to seeing you next time.